the posted demand for a product is $12. The total cost CX equals 0 0.3 x squared plus 2x plus 5. Part A, what is the revenue function? The revenue use the notation, the capital IX. The part B, what is the profit function? The profit capital P is from revenue minus cost. I just make a plan, what are we gonna do? And then part C, what is the maximum value of the profit? So we're gonna maximize or find the local maximum profit value. So max profit, a max of the PX, okay? That means we have to find out what X that give you the maximum PX and how do you find the X critical value? Just give you a big picture of how to work on this problem. How to find the critical value, you find the derivative, let it be zero and solve for X. You see the trade of the, the process here. All right, everyone okay with the plan? or the overall picture of the question. So far so good. Uh, and yeah. okay, so the next one, now we're gonna go back to work on the detail for each part of the problem. So what is the revenue? The problem doesn't give you the direct information for the revenue, like it's not giving you exactly what Rx is, but it will give you the demand for the product. The demand is what? Oh. Demand is the price function, right? The yeah. lower case P. So 12X. Yes, the revenue is X multiplied by the price function. That means the R X or the revenue is X multiplied by 12 or 12 X. Okay. The price per item, the price for a product is $12 per one, per one item. Are we good? So the Rx is yes. done. Okay, good. And then next one, the profit function from the setup, the revenue minus the cost. So then the profit will be the revenue first, which is 12x subtracted by, make sure you put parentheses around. You don't put parentheses around you get the wrong equation to work on, okay? Whoa. To be safe, I mean, not to be safe, the process of this, to open up the parentheses, apply the negative sign to each term and simplify as much as you can. Okay, so do we have light terms? Yes, we do. The light terms are 12x and negative 2x. That becomes, 10x minus 0.3x squared and then minus 5. So this is your px or the profit function. Okay. And then what? We're going to use the profit function to find out what is the maximum value of the profit. And from the steps that I put on the side here, to get the maximum profit, you're gonna find out what X or uh, how many items gonna give you the maximum profit. How do you find this? So that is the process to find the local max, local min. So by local max min, right? And to find local max min, you're gonna use the critical value and the critical value is obtained by solving the first derivative of the function. That tells you you're gonna to have to find the derivative of the profit function from the three terms, the 10X minus 0 0.3 times X squared uh, minus X. What do you get as a derivative of this function, uh, the PX function? 10 minus. So we're gonna have 10 from 10X and then minus the derivative of the second term will be Four. 0 0.6. 6x and the tip of the 5 is the 0, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is a polynomial function. We're going to solve for x where the p prime equals 0, okay? This step, we're going to find the critical value. Uh, 
and p prime is 10 minus 0 0.6 x, let it be 0. Solve for x, subtract 10 both sides to get negative 0, 6 x equals negative 10. So x equals negative 10 divided by negative 0 0.6. What do we have? Do we miss anything? Make sure we don't miss anything, okay? 0 0.3 x squared plus 2 x plus 5, subtract, subtract, subtract. So 0 0.03 x squared, and then that's 10 derivative. Three over 3. So going to be, say it again. It's, it's fraction. It is a fraction. So we get negative and negative reduce. So this is the same as 100 over 6 or 50 over 3. Can we draw a line 16 point six 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 seven or something? We, we, the goal is to find the maximum value of the profit. Oh. So how do you know that this critical number will give you the maximum number? Okay. We can draw the line if we want. Okay. That's another way to verify. Okay. If I go along with what Min said, we draw the line and locate 50 over three, right? And this line is the line to represent the sign for the derivative. Is that what you were planning to do, Min? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to verify this is the X that gives you the maximum number, you can check out the value on the left, on the right side of it. Okay, since this is a, one of the application, so it will not go anywhere below zero, right? Because X, talking about the profit, and X is the number of the item, the item will be, will not be negative. That's the bottom line. So if you right. pick any number on the right side of the 50 over three, pick an easy number. Think about the, 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 the round number that's easier to compute. Like, um, mm -hmm. say it again. 20, 21, or 20. So you can do 20. Yes, 20 is a good number. If 20, because 20 is 50 over three, right? It's on the right side of 50 over three. If x equals 20, so the p prime gonna be 10 minus 0 0.6 times 20, which is 10 uh, plus 12, right? So positive. Oh. 10. Is it 10 minus, sorry, 10 minus 12. So that is negative two, correct? So negative sign. Negative sign over here. And then for the left-hand side of the 50 over three, pick the number. 50. Uh, how, about, how about 10, easy number? 10. Okay, let's pick 10. 10 is less than 50 over three, right? Why I pick 10? Because we have one decimal place, just easier to compute. So the P prime at 10 equals 10 minus 0 0.6 multiplied by 10, which is 10 minus six, right? Number is four. So you get plus psi here. The P, P prime or the first derivative will tell you about increasing, decreasing. So we have increasing on the left, decreasing on the right. So that means you have the local maximum occurs at 10 uh, at 15 over 3. So this is another verification that the point x equals 50 over 3 going to give you the maximum profit. Okay, so this case is the case of using the first derivative test. Okay, the, the other case that you can use is called the is the second derivative test. If you recall, we didn't use much of the second derivative test for the skill problem when, when we sketch the graph, but it's convenient if you use the second derivative test to verify, okay? Second derivative test. If you recall, the second derivative test is the test that you find the critical number and the critical number is 50 over three. So this one is critical number. And then you're gonna find the second derivative of the P. Since P prime is 10 minus 0 0.6. So then the P double prime is, this is X, right? So it's P double prime is negative 0 0.6. The value is, the P double prime is less than zero. If the number 
if p double prime less than zero, am I happy or am not happy? So if that's so, it will be unhappy. I'm not happy. If I'm not happy, I use the icon here upside down. When I have thing the upside down, I see the top of the curve here. So that means the x equals 50 over 3. Whatever the number you put in, because the p double prime is a constant, it doesn't matter the value that you have. Since the value we have is x equals 50 over 3, gonna gives, gonna, uh, will give the local minimum value. See the, oh, sorry, sorry, not minimum, local maximum value, because the top of the icon here, based on the second derivative less than zero. So since uh, we use the second derivative test, it's, it's, to me, it's less process or less steps to verify whether it's the maximum or minimum. Because if you use the first derivative test, you have to pick up the value on each interval, determine the size, and then increasing, decreasing. And finally, you make a conclusion that, OK, we see the local maximum over there. So more steps to work on to get to the same conclusion as using the second derivative test to find another prime and determine the size and use the icon whether you're happy or not happy. If not happy, you have a bump on the top of the curve here. That means the x is going to give you the local max. But if you have the positive side of the second derivative, so like I'm happy, so I'm gonna have uh, the dip on the bottom. That means my critical value will give me the local minimum uh, value. So with these two ways to pick one that you like, okay? As the application, the second derivative test will cut back the steps to get the work done. So right now we know we're gonna have the maximum value. We don't get the final answer yet. The final answer asks what is that maximum value? Okay, to find the maximum value, you go back to the profit function. And then what is the profit function? The profit function is in the box here. So I'm gonna move up here. So then the maximum profit at x equals 50 over three is, so I'm gonna put a p at 50 over three equals 10 times 50 over three minus 0 0.3 times 50 over three squared, I run a broom and then minus five. And whatever the number that I get, that would be the maximum profit value. So that we see the maximum value of the profit is 78.33.